YouTube. Tim with Outdoor Trail Hikers coming at you with a short video and kind of review about the 4000 starting watts, 3500 rated watts that's continuous. This is the generator that I've been several years ago. As I said, it's 4,000 starting watts, 3,500 continuous rated watts. It's RV ready. It has the RV plug, 120 volt plug, a 120 or 240 volt plug. You switch this switch to go from 120 to 240. You have your voltmeter. You have your circuit breakers, 15 amp, 15 amp, 20 amp. You have your engine on off switch you have your oil check right there you have your oil drain let's go around the other side you have your petcock with the description on off you have your choke over here with instructions also, choke instructions down there. This is a 196cc Champion generator. I believe that's a three gallon tank. Twist it around here. Overflow line. Spark plug, plug, carburetor, air breather. Has a rubber mount system on it. I'll include some pictures in the video. And then your muffler is back there with the protective plate. The generator motor. There's your exhaust with spark arrestor screen in it. I bought this generator to power our 30 foot RV that we used to own that had you know everything a home has in it and uh, it powered it pretty well the only thing I never did is I never ran the microwave and air conditioner at the same time but I could run like the air conditioner and everything else in the camper you know plugs and radio water stuff like that no problem and i might could have ran both of them but i just didn't feel like it was safe so i never did run the microwave with anything else i also uh, put a fence up around some acreage and i needed a welder and uh, just a flux core welder and uh, i put this on the trailer and i ran my welder off of this and it, it worked fine. You know, I welded my corner post up and everything. I couldn't have been happier. I did keep an eye on my welder. And, uh, you know, every now and then I'd had to kind of feel, make sure it wasn't overheating. But it got the job done and uh, I was happy. So, you know, I said it ran our RV. I ran our welder off of it. I have ran some electrical saws and stuff like that off of it. And it's really never pulls down that much it's not all that loud i'll crank it here in a minute which that's another story and i also wanted to uh point out that there is a ground hookup where you can run a wire from there to a post in the ground to give it a real good ground i've actually not used that actually i did when i, was, I had the rv set up on the back acreage and I was using this to run the RV. I did have a rod back there that I could hook to. But other than that, like when I was doing the fence and stuff, I never did use this ground and it worked fine and I haven't tore the generator up yet. Now, speaking about tearing the generator up, this generator has been sitting in the garage ever since we moved in this house and it's been over, I wanna say going on two years. And it hadn't ran a little bit before that. Now, when I put it up, I did put stabilizer in the fuel. I also ran it 
I closed my fuel line off on front at the petcock. I closed that off and I ran it until it just ran out of fuel. You know, uh, once it's out of fuel, it shut off. Once it ran out of fuel, I had already uh, added some stabilizer to it. And I just pretty much put it up and hadn't used it again. So this is going to be the first startup with you guys, if it'll even start. So let's go around here. And we're going to flip this switch to on. We're going to leave that on 120. And don't ever plug anything in until after you have this generator running and it's warmed up a little bit. Now we'll come over here and get the cobwebs off of it. And we're going to turn the petcock. There we go. We're going to turn the petcock on. That'll let some fuel run. And then we're going to put this choke all the way over to choke. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to look in here this gas. It's been shook up. It don't look bad. It smells like gas. To be safe, you're probably better off changing this gas out. But we're going to chance it. I've already got everything to the settings it needs to be to run. And I'm going to put this phone on a stand so I can crank it. So the generator cranked up. First crank, how about that? I'm serious, that thing hasn't run over two years. I probably will pour the gas out and put fresh gas in it because I don't know if I want to trust that stabilizer or not. But as you saw, you know, it cranked right up. I can't believe it. Which I, I stored it in the garage. You know, it wasn't out in the weather or anything like that. Oh, and, and let me talk to you about this little thing I made just to kind of haul it around. I'm always doing stuff on a budget as much as I can. And as you can see, I've got a pallet laying there, leftovers from uh, another project I was doing. But uh, that was a pallet, and I already had these wheels laying around. The front ones swivel, the back ones are stationary. And I just uh, used lag bolts to put them up in there. They're pretty snug and tight, and it moves around fine with that generator on there. Now, I don't leave it on that platform. If I'm going to run it any length of time, I go ahead and lift it off of there and set it on the ground. And if I'm running it to power an RV, I try to get it away from the RV pretty good ways. And I have the exhaust pointing away from the RV to quiet it down a little bit. And I don't use that if I'm in a you know, state park or anything because I, I just go ahead and get a spot with electricity. But if I'm boondocking, you know, or out primitive camping and there's nobody close to me, uh, I'll go ahead and take it sometimes if I have air conditioner that I can run and I'll run my air conditioner unit and I'll keep refrigerator and stuff like that going. And since I sold the RV, you know, you have to remember, I don't know if you pay attention to or watched any of our other videos, but we've had a pop-up with air conditioner. We've had a 30-foot Jayco Featherlight, or J-Feather, excuse me, uh, that we've used this generator with both of those. And using our rooftop tent, we really don't have a purpose to take that with us. 
you know, it takes up a lot of space. But I am considering buying a small trailer that has air conditioner, uh, something that I can actually take off the trail. Maybe, you know, mainly forest roads, but possibly that stuff a little bit rougher than a forest road. And I definitely want it to have air conditioning unit. So I may actually take this generator with me to run the air conditioner off and on to, you know, if I need to cool down, uh, if I need to power something, it'd be nice to have it there because normally the places I'm camped, there's nobody else around me anywhere, so the noise is not going to disturb them. So it's that's not a big deal. And normally at night it gets cool enough once the sun's down that I don't need air conditioner. But it'd be nice during the day if I got hot to climb off in there and cool down a little bit. So I've got the generator, so I just as well use it. Now that's not to say that I haven't considered selling this generator and using the money from it and adding to it to buy one of those little small generators that put out about the same wattage uh, to run an air conditioner unit. But I don't know, it's still like $300 more than this. When I bought this, I got it from Tractor Supply. It was $370. But I know now uh, that you can buy basically the same wattage generator with dual fuel, it'll run off gas and propane for the same money or maybe even a little bit less than this one you just have to check around and catch them on sale but it would be pretty cool to have a generator run off propane and gas but that's my little review of this generator you know it's, it's a good generator if i ever lose electricity i can use this to power my refrigerator and freezer and you know if i need a little heater or something i can do that so it's good to have one on hand for emergency situations in fact we had that last ice storm a few years ago. That's how long I've had this generator. Uh, I didn't have the generator during the ice storm, but after we got through the ice storm, we'd been without electricity for a little while. Uh, it wasn't nothing major, but I decided to go ahead and purchase one just in case it ever happened again. So, that, you know, I chose this one because it is big enough to power RV. It is RV ready, and I really like that about it and considering it's not all that noisy we have a trip to vicksburg mississippi coming up next month so y'all be sure to subscribe and keep your eyes peeled for our new videos about vicksburg we're going to go to the military park and there's some other places we're going to visit and we're going to try to share that uh, visit with y'all but i hope y'all enjoyed the video please hit the like button and subscribe uh, I appreciate you watching. Y'all have a good day.